We are continuing to follow the breaking news surrounding a series of catastrophic tornadoes. A federal emergency has been declared in Kentucky, where as many as 100 people are feared dead at this hour. The tornadoes swept across six states. As these terrifying images show, the winds destroyed everything, everything in their path. And at least 36 tornadoes have been recorded across the south and midwest parts of the country from Friday night into Saturday uh, morning. A rescue and recovery mission is ongoing. Hundreds of thousands of people have been left without power across Arkansas, Illinois, Kentucky, Missouri, Mississippi, and Tennessee. Now, initial reports on one of the tornadoes suggest that it is tracked uh, as far as 250 miles, which would actually set the record for the longest tornado path in U.S. history. Radar reports suggesting debris was thrown as far as 30,000 feet into the air. Meteorologists are working to confirm it. Uh, it's out at the top level on the scale for force described as causing incredible damage. If it is registered at that level, It'll be only the second time since 1950 that a tornado of such strength and magnitude has been recorded in the last two months of the year. Now, it is important to note here, this is an extremely rare event for this time of year, for the month of December. It all comes at the end of one of the most devastating years on record for climate disasters in the United States. And joining me now is Michael Mann, Penn State University Distinguished Professor and Director of the Earth System Science Center. He's also the author of The New Climate War, The Fight to Take Back Our Planet. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. I hate that it is about this tragic story that we see playing out, but let's start with what, we're, what we've learned so far in this instance. What more do we know about these types of storms and, and were forecasters expecting it? Yeah, it's good to be with you, Eamon. And, uh, you know, it's, it is difficult to predict these very large outbreaks. But there is one basic factor here that we know is at work. Um, these very warm conditions that we saw over the last week over essentially the southern half of this country with temperatures in the 70s and 80s in the southern uh, central states and parts of the, the east coast as well. Um, those are very unusually uh, warm temperatures for this time of year. And the Gulf of Mexico is extremely warm right now. And we know that that moisture is streaming into the southern United States. So you have all this warmth, you have all this moisture. And that's one of the major ingredients for these huge outbreaks of tornadoes. You need a lot of turbulent energy in the atmosphere. And that's there in the form of this very warm, moist air. Now, you can go into it a little bit more deeply and talk about the fact that you also need twisting in the atmosphere and a big dip in the jet stream gives that to you. And a La Nina year like this year, when it's cold in the tropical Pacific, often leads to that jet stream pattern that gives you the twisting. So you've got the moist energy in the atmosphere, you've got the twisting, you put those together and you get these record outbreaks like we've seen in recent years and like we're seeing right now. Yes, yeah, so to that point, when you look at this past year, we've seen a staggering number of deadly weather events. What is the pattern telling you? Because I think if we just look at a singular event, people may not understand the trend or what is happening over a prolonged time. But when you look at the number of devastating uh, weather related events over the past year or so, how much is climate change affecting these weather catastrophes that we are seeing play out? Yeah, you know, there are surprises in store when it comes to the impacts of climate change. And one of the surprises we're seeing is this very dramatic increase in extreme weather events, uh, the unprecedented heat waves and droughts and wildfires and super floods, that uh, northwest heat dome that we saw this summer, by some estimates, was a one in 20,000 year event. We shouldn't be seeing things like this. Even accounting for climate change, it was estimated to be a one in a thousand year event. What that tells you is that the models that we're currently using to diagnose the impacts of climate change on this extreme on these extreme weather events, if anything, are actually underestimating the impact that climate change is having. Some of the ingredients are pretty easy to predict. You know, you make the planet warmer, you're going to get longer uh, and more intense heat waves. Uh, you're going to evaporate more moisture into the atmosphere, so you, there's more moisture to turn into record rainfall events and flooding events. And you take the heat and the summer drought as the, you know, the warm uh, air bakes the earth, you get uh, these unprecedented droughts like we've seen. Uh, that's all pretty easy to explain, but we're seeing an increase in the persistence and frequency of these events that can't simply be explained by those 
factors. It requires something more. And it seems to have to do with the way that climate change is changing the jet stream, giving us more of these stalled weather patterns um, and these very large uh, undulations in the jet stream that give us big high pressures, big low pressures, and extreme weather events. The climate models are actually underestimating the impact that climate change seems to be having on these events. Uncertainty isn't our friend. Uh, if anything, we've underestimated some of the more detrimental impacts of climate change. All right, Michael Mann, I always appreciate your insights. I always learn uh, quite a lot whenever uh, I get a chance to talk to you about all this. We certainly don't cover it enough. I greatly appreciate your time this evening, Michael.